Hey, what's going on everybody? This is just a quick video showing you how to use the material icons from Google Fonts. So to get here, you're gonna to go to fonts.google.com forward slash icons. I'll go ahead and put that link in the description below. Once you're on this page, uh, there's a couple things you can do right out of the gate. One of them is you can click on this filters button in the top left corner and you can customize the look and feel of the icons. So this is your preview of the icons down here. They are filtered by style and category. These are the defaults, but you can play around with these if you wanna filter them down any further. And then you've got four different customization options here. You've got the fill, which is either zero for off or one for on. You can see once you toggle it on, some of these icons, not all of them, but the ones that can be filled will be filled. So then you untoggle it and it goes back to the outline. So then you have your weight. This is just like with a regular font where you know, if you have 100, it's really thin. If you have 700, it's, you know, really bold. And if you have 400, it's regular right in the middle. So then they've got some other things like grade and optical size. If you click on the little eye here, it'll show you an example and an explanation of what those do. And then you can just play with these to get them to look exactly how you want them to for your project. So once you've messed around with the customizations and the filters and you have it how you want it, then you just go down and you find the icon that you want to use. So let's say we want to use the home icon. You click on it and there's two different options here. You either have variable or static. Variable essentially means that you can have a range of values for those customizations that you set or static just means that you're just going to use the values that you set whenever you were in the filters menu. So if you just need one specific look and feel, then static might be the option for you. But if you want the ability to toggle and change the values within your project using CSS, then the variable icon font is probably what you need. They also have options for Android and iOS, mobile development. We're doing web development, so I'll leave it up here on the web tab, but you can explore those tabs as well. So including the font in your project is really simple. The top link here is going to be for the variable font, or if you want the static font, you just go to this one here and copy it. So either one of these, but not both. And then if you do variable, you will need to include some additional CSS. Either way, whichever one you choose, you're going to go down to the bottom where it says inserting the icon, and you're going to copy the span HTML tag and put that in your code. So we're going to do the variable icon font here just so I can show you a little more about it because the static font is pretty straightforward. The variable, there's you know some things that you can do. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this link right here. And then we'll just head over to an environment with a code pen where we can plug this in and see it live. So if I put the link in there, nothing happens, right? I still need to include an icon. So if I go back to the icons and I scroll down, then I want to go to inserting the icon and copy that as well. So then I go over here and I paste that in. And next, what I want to do, and you'll notice that it already appeared, but we can change the look and feel of it from within our project by adding this CSS right here. So underneath variable icon font, beneath where you have the link, there's also this style tag for this internal style sheet. So we'll go ahead and copy that, head back over. And yes, you know, technically you can paste this in here. This isn't uh, best practice. So what I'm gonna do is take the CSS out of the style tags and get rid of the style tags. And then technically you'd put this in an external style sheet that you would then link into your HTML file. But because we're inside of CodePen, they give us this little interface where we can just plug it into the CSS area. So here is my dot material dash symbols dash outlined class CSS selector. And inside of it, it's got a property called font variation settings. And then the value for that property is going to be those four customization options. And remember, we've got ranges that we set over here. So if we look at the link that we brought in, we can kind of move this over a little bit, make it easier to see. We essentially have the CDN, and then we have some query strings, the font family, material symbol outline, and then the options. So the OPSZ, the weight, the fill, and the grade, and then separated is a at sign. And then we actually get the values for each one of these respectively. So the first set of values is going to be for OPSZ. The second set of values is going to be for weight and so on. And so 20 dot dot 48 is indicative of a range. And so the range will be between 20 and 48 for the OPSZ. 
And then for the weight, we have a range between 100 and 700. So for example, you see the weight over here is 400. 400 is technically the, the normal value or the regular value. If we change it to a lighter value like 100, and then we look at our icon over here, we'll notice that it got thinner. And so then if we wanna go up to a heavier weight, we go to 700 and it gets thicker. And so then if we wanna go back down, say back to the regular value, we go to 400. You can do 200, 300, 500, 600, any increment of 100 between 100 and 700. So then same thing for the grade uh, and the OPSC and the fill. So the fill is a value zero to one. If you didn't wanna use outlines, then you would change it from zero to one and you would get the filled in version. And that's it, it's really simple. You just include the CDN. Of course, I think there's an option for downloading it if you want to include it in your uh, local assets for your project. Uh, we're not gonna go into that in this video for now, just include this link that they give you. And then you use the span. So the span, the important thing here is that it has the class. So then you can select it and you can modify it using this class name, this class selector. And then that it has the name of the specific icon. And so if you go back and you start browsing, each one of these icons has its own name. If there's multiple words like arrow download, then it's all lowercase with an underscore separator. So for example, if we want to do arrow download, and then once it loads, oh no, what happened? Downward, <laughs> it's wrong. Okay, arrow downward, it's funny that it gave me that. So here it is, uh, the arrow downward. Did you notice though that I think download is also an icon? Yep, so there's download. So uh, there's one for home, there's one for search. Uh, I think there's one for like settings if you want a cogwheel. So you can just explore all these different options. And then once you find the one you want, you just plug it in. So for example, if I decide that I wanna go back to home, I just type in home and now I have that home icon. And so you can include as many of these as you want and you just put in the exact name for the one that you wanna include. And that's it, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So Google fonts slash icons, and you pick the one you want, you put the link in there, you include the CSS, and then you include the HTML for the actual icon. That's for the dynamic one. If you want something simple, you can also do the static version. So you essentially just copy that link, you replace the one that you have, and then you don't need this anymore. This, will, this doesn't really do anything. And this is what you get. All right, cool. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Hopefully you learned a little something. Uh, if you have any questions or any recommendations for future content, let me know in the comments below and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace.